Yesterday, the Diamondbacks signed Jordan Montgomery to a surprising one-year, $25 million deal with an option for a second year. That pales in comparison to the $150 million deal Montgomery was reportedly seeking. Now, carrying the load is brought to you by the Chevy Silverado. Here are the top 10 highest paid Red Sox on this year's roster. It's crazy to see salaries between one and three million on this list. Rafael Devers is the highest paid player at just under 30 million. By the time you get to number five, Chris Martin, you're already below eight million dollars. Red Sox not spending money like other teams in baseball. Uh, let's roll, presented by Town Fair Tire. John Tomasi, very excited about opening day. He's all over the Red Sox. Um, why didn't they sign Jordan Montgomery? He was basically all over Boston. Some, some days he'd be in Charlestown. Some days he'd be in Southie. Some days he'd be in Roxbury. Like, please sign me. Some days he'd go to Fenway Park, sign me. And they didn't. Why didn't they sign this guy? Uh, it's awful. And it, it, it's, it's the perfect ending to this miserable, terrible, wretched offseason. You know, it's like all you needed. Th this team is actually not that far away from being passable. And what they needed was a starter. They needed another starting pitcher. And he was there all winter in your lap. He was working out at BC, the whole thing. And you just, you ignored him right to the very end. And then he signed for nothing. You know what you could have done, guys? You could have easily, if you wanted to go over the luxury tax just a little bit, signed him and Blake Snell. And then guess what? You actually have a pretty good team. Your offense is good. Your defense is better. You're bumping two guys into a bullpen that is now a serious strength. You're right there. Those two guys sat there all winter. They both got effectively two-year deals for like 50 to 60 million bucks total. You could have done that. You could have signed both of them. You didn't. And here we are. It's going to be another craptastic Red Sox season. You're excited Hooray. about it? Uh, oh, I'm psyched. And, and listen, uh, you're on the, the, the station of the Red Sox. You're yeah. excited uh, uh, about the product they're putting out there? No. How could you be? Did I did I just see that right? Ch when did Chase Anderson? Yeah, they sign? just got him. That's the best part. Chase like Anderson, Chase Anderson just got here and he's, he's already 10. he's already on he's the your list. He's the 10th highest paid player. They just got him off the scrap heap from Pittsburgh. Where'd they get him? Garbage. The guy they got today from Tampa might be like number 11 on that list. So no, how could you be happy with with what they're doing? And how could you be happy with ownership and the direction they've been taking now for five years? They're not spending. And I know the logic they'll give you is. Well, look at the Mets and look at some of these other teams. Look at you the last couple. Of, your plan hasn't been working. So why don't you try it the Mets way? Uh, when you used to try it the Mets way, you won World Series. Why don't you try it the Mets way and then say, eh, we overpaid. Let's course correct. I've been hearing they're going to course correct for three, four, five years. And all they do is finish in last place. So, no, no one can be happy with yeah, that. How about try it the Cubs yeah. way? It right. doesn't have to be the Mets way. Just just like a team, the Cubs signed Bellinger last year. They were in it right to the end. That's all you, that's all you have. Well, well, wait a minute. I can't, okay. do, I can't do this all year. You mentioned, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You mentioned, you mentioned the Mets. Uh, you mentioned the Cubs. Why not the Red Sox way? Like, they used to spin like the Mets but smarter. They spent money and they got a payoff for how about, it. How about some I, dumb spending? I'm I, in for exactly. some dumb spending. But I, was, I'm in for that. Or high spending because it wasn't necessarily dumb spending for them. And they had some bad contracts, uh, you know, Pablo Sandoval and, and some of those. But for the most part, when they spent, some of the great Red Sox were uh, the result of some splurges, some free agent splurges. Now, you mentioned we know Montgomery's not going to be a part of this uh, rotation. We know Blake Snell's not going to be a part of this rotation. But who we got right now, uh, Tomasi, if you look at these guys, how would you rate it? You know, one to ten, starting rotation for the Red Sox, led by Bayo. Uh, you got Whitlock in there. You got some other guys. How do you feel about this rotation? I mean, like a four or five. Like I think I actually think Whitlock and Hauk have a chance to be better than people think. Mm -hmm. I think Bayo is pretty good. He's not a number one starter. He's probably not a number two starter, but he could be a legit number three starter on a good team. I just I look at this. It's almost like it's the wrong question. The Red Sox are an incomplete team. Like, that's what they are. They have a pretty good offense. Their defense is better. They have some kind of intriguing young arms. All they needed was someone legitimate on top of that rotation. And sorry, not Lucas Giolito, even if he had stayed healthy. Chase Anderson. <laughs> Chase Anderson is, is, a, is a possible solution. Maybe I'm underrating him in his $1.5 million salary. Whatever it is, you needed a real arm on top. You didn't get it. And so to judge this rotation on that, I almost feel is unfair to the guys on the team. You said before the show that the Red Sox are building backwards. What does that mean? 
So they're waiting until the young guys get here. First of all, the young guys are already getting here. Cassis is here. Bayo is here. Sedan Rafael is going to be your starting center fielder. Jaron Duran has all-star potential. They're already here. Name me a Red Sox team in the past that tried to do it where it's like, we'll start spending once all the young guys. It's not only when they get here. The young guys have to get here and start winning. They have to be the foundation of, like, a playoff team. That's not how it works. Dustin Madroya, or I'll go back even farther. No Omar got here. Mo Vaughn was already the MVP. He was on the roster. Pedroia gets here. You've already got Manny. You've got Ortiz. Mookie and Bogarts. You have Ortiz. You have Pedroia. So it's like you have the foundational pieces in place to take the pressure off those guys. The Red Sox are like, no, no, no. These guys are going to show up, and then it, we're going to be in business. Okay, Marcelo Meyer, you have to save the franchise. That's not how it works. And it's insane to me that that's how they're trying to do it. Jones, you're usually very positive uh, about all this, uh, all this stuff. There's got to be something or, or some aspect of the Red Sox that you, you like or you look forward to, you're optimistic about, anything, anyone, nothing. <laughs> Uh, no. I mean, uh, the lineup's okay. I All mean, right. I'm kind of with you on that. The, the, def lineup. the defense should be better, right? Rafaela, a full, a full year <laughs> at a Trevor story. Like, their defense should be better. But, like, I, I don't know. How many wins are we talking with a decent lineup and some better defense when the rotation? I'm sorry. I would not grade the rotation a four or a five. Uh, Bayo is a number three. He's your number one starter. And then everybody else maybe is a bullpen arm. That's like a, that's like a one rotation. And so I don't, I don't see how they're going to win a bunch of games this year unless they finally make an addition in season at the trade deadline. And I'm not holding my breath for that. Yeah, and you know what makes it worse? They have no depth. So at some point, like Whitlock has shown us that he gets hurt a lot. Hauk gets hurt. And so you're going to lose a guy and you have nothing to replace him in the organization. And you just mentioned it, Jones, but what faith do you have that they're going to go right. get someone to fill a hole? So they're only going to get worse as the season goes along. Uh, my sources tell me that the thing that will really piss you off is one of my favorite topics, uh, Alex Cora. And you just don't want to hear people ask you all year, uh, is Alex Cora going to be here all season? Why does that bother you? It's a relevant topic. Because it was Alex the Cora. first. It was the very first question that I got, like right out of the shoots. Is he going to make it through the year? And the implication was, is he going to quit? Is he going to walk away? And I'm like, Alex Cora is not going to quit on this team. First of all, he's a free agent at the end of the year. He would like to go into that free agency not having finished last again. So. A, he wants well, to stick around. Boy, Dad, quit. Yeah, he wants to stick <laughs> around. He wants to stick around and leave the team somewhere. B, B, if you think that that's the loophole, I don't know what kind of candidate you are on the managerial market if you just quit on your team in the middle of the season. That's the part hey, that drives me crazy. They put me in a bad position. Hey, I had no choice. Yeah. I had no choice. I'm out. Money. I'm hey, out. Jordan Montgomery was outside the door at Fenway Park. He's pounding on the door. Oh, okay. So this is Come the on. manager who's going to MF his front office on the way out the door. Yeah, we want. Yeah. Hire him. Quiet quit. Hey, Quiet that's quit. Quiet that's the quit. way. That's how you do it. That's Quiet right. Quit. You guys saw it. Yeah. You guys saw it. I had no choice.